pirate class is known for utilizing fire, whether it be with his primary weapon, comboing with one of the numerous flare gun choices to boost your damage, or the sharpened volcano fragment if you're a masochist. It's in the name after all, but one day a small game called Sleeping Dogs came along and had a collaboration with TF2, introducing new cosmetics, a new map, and more importantly, new weapons. Pyro was one of the lucky four classes to receive a weapon, with that weapon being the Neon Annihilator. The weapon has basically acted the same for over 10 years at this point, with one stat being the ability to remove sappers being the only addition, and slower firing speed being swapped out for less damage against players instead. The one defining trait of this weapon is its ability to crit wet players, which kind of flies in the face that the Pyro, the Greek word for fire, does in their role. We already had the extinguisher at this point, proving to be a great melee to deal tons of damage to enemies set on fire, so having another weapon doing the same job would be redundant simply speaking. Kind of like a certain stat crossing over with another melee. Pyro however was and is known for being a class that is able to combo as previously mentioned, so why not add a bushwhacker kind of effect for those that are soaked? And hey, instead of comboing with just your own weapons, you can do the same with other players, but that requires others helping you, and the only weapon you have as a Pyro that is considered soaking enemies doesn't even combo with the Neon Annihilator. So where can we use this? Why on maps with water of course, and boy are there plenty of maps. Out of the now 147 maps as of writing, TF2 has 50 with water. Okay, that's a little low, but then you have to consider only 35 actually have interactable bodies of water, and that's a staggeringly low 23.81% of all maps that are or have been in the official casual rotation. Here are the maps that aren't available or have water you can't interact with. But I think the Neon Annihilator is cool, so let's examine the effectiveness of being a pirate shark in the maps where we can use water to our advantage without having to rely on others. As we go through, I'll have a nifty little tier list ranking how good using this weapon is on those maps. And without further ado, let's begin our deep dive, <laughs> get it, into what is possible. We're starting off with quite a decent map. The water under the bridge and in the sewers of this staple map isn't anything extraordinary, but the layout of it all is quite good for pyro sharks, with its sharp corners allowing you to ambush anyone coming around, along with a nifty health pack in the middle of each side of the sewer boosts your longevity. There's also the fact you can air blast people down to the watery depths, and even drop down on those coming into your base by jumping down the staircases. I think 2 for, while not being the best, is certainly one of the better maps to play pyro shark on. This is pretty much the same as before, except there's a bomb in the corner where the health pack is, so depending on how you see this hindrance, it could be beneficial or it could spell disaster for you. Personally, it's too handy for enemies trying to get away from you if they can cause splash damage to make it explode. So because of that, I'm putting it just under regular 2-4. What you're looking at is the only patch of water on Badlands, and it's not even on all versions, only Arena in King of the Hill. Then consider you can't even play Arena in Casual, and that leaves you with this pitiful pool. The only use for this I can think of is to force enemies coming out of their spawn down into it and attacking them once they get wet. This serves no purpose in the overall map unless you're super bored and want to get a silly kill or two, but really this map sucks for Pyro Shark on any version. This map is brilliant for pyro sharks as there's plenty of water outside of each spawn and a path enemies are forced down into if they're pushing the car, so that gives it a major plus since they'll have no choice if they're playing the objective. Next to that area is a small place you can hide under and wait for people to drop in if they're too impatient to walk around, and finally a fairly large area on the other side of spawn. Now while all this water is good, it's mostly away from the main action going on, and you can force them into the water if you so desire, but unlike 2-4, I feel like for the most part they can avoid the water here apart from that one area. This doesn't mean it's a bad choice, but you'll need to put in more effort to be more effective here. Yet another spot on the map that is the only source of water in the entire play area. The upside to this compared to Badlands is that there are small hiding spots for you to demolish any unsuspecting sap that drops down from above, plus the fact that again, like Banana Bay, they have to come through here to play the objective. The only downside is that it's on Halloween and spells are pretty abundant, so really Pyroshark's effectiveness is diminished by that alone. At least the coverage is acceptable though, more than what Badlands has going. Oh look, a map that has one pitiful area of water on it, who would have guessed? That aside, it gets points deducted from it due to the fact that it's not only pretty easy to avoid, but it's out in the open smack bang in the middle of the map. And again, it's on Halloween, and you'll have giants shooting crits at you, so while better than Badlands, not that it's a hard barrier to pass, it's not by a whole lot. 
Cursed Cove on the surface looks like it could be fairly fun. There's a large piece of water on the coast where the ghost ship comes up, allowing you to ambush those waiting to drop off the objective. The only issue is that you're pretty wide open, especially waving around your melee, making the walls near the middle your only way of hiding and getting the sneak attack on enemies. Apparently the water outside the ring where you drop off the bottles makes you susceptible to being sewed, but who stays that long in there really? Somewhat decent overall though. Doomsday isn't just a map name here, it seems like Doomsday for the Neon Annihilator once again as this one puddle near the Australium is your only source of water. I'm only giving this a point above Badlands because at least the enemy can trip into it trying to grab the objective, and it's in a relatively important area of the map so that allows for you to do something I guess? Get used to this for maps that only have one measly puddle because it doesn't get much different. Double Cross plays like a somewhat worse 2-4 for Pyroshocks here. On the one hand, it has a fairly decent sewer area, but on the other, it's quite small. The layout allows for you to get the jump on enemies sometimes, and the bonus of playing around the enemies side of the map is that they can drop down out of spawn, giving you a perfect opportunity to send them right back with a couple of swings. Make sure to spice up your positioning around this part though, as it'll be likely they won't fall for it many more times. A fairly decent map overall. This only has the spawn area here, but it's automatically better than Badlands. Freight is an interesting map for Pyro Sharks. There are these areas between the middle and second point for both teams respectively with a path going towards the enemy team. Both sides can use this to their advantage regardless of what team they're on. Sneak attacks on players can drop ubers, one shot light classes and just deal a whole lot of chaos. The only problem I see is that it's quite a tight area to navigate, meaning if you run into a heavy for example, it's likely game over for you. Other than that, using it sparingly will work wonders for you and your Neon Annihilator. Did you know that there's one puddle just outside of blue spawn on their right side coming out? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know, because the bloody thing is nearly unnoticeable unless you try and listen to the difference in footsteps. Take a listen. And if you need more proof, here's me killing a medic with a crit. I think this actually might be worse than Badlands for once, as the only use I can see is if a red player is getting too cocky, or if you're waiting for a person who doesn't know about it to come out of blue spawn and ambush them, it's absolutely terrible. This body of water only appears on stage 3 and is only in one area yet again, and that area is totally avoidable unless they trip over a stray rock somewhere. One use I can see is ambushing blue players coming after spawn, though you'd have to have already lost two rounds to effectively use this in some capacity. So in that regard, I don't think it's very good overall. Hear me out on this, okay? There are a number of puddles scattered around the map, which on first glance would make this seem like a reasonable map to work your Pyroshark magic on, right? WRONG! This map messed with me so hard I didn't even bother properly inspecting every puddle along with getting attacked by Halloween bosses. Let me explain, alright? So, you see this perfectly visible pool of water the soldier is standing in? Seems like it'd work, right? But nope, no crits whatsoever. Oh, but Binocli, that's just one little puddle, surely there's no tomfoolery around any other areas, right? WRONG! You see this puddle near the car outside of Blue Spawn? There is one, and I mean one specific little area that actually crits enemies. Here's the proof! So, after these two examples, I decided to go screw it and just decide that it could be good or it couldn't. Who knows? Also, I was hiding this one tier from you, the Broke Binocli tier. Well done, Graveyard, you did it. Here's the spot, they might work, they might not. Go wild and figure it out yourselves. Hydro has a few decent spots in the dam and warehouse territories. The warehouse area has a bit of water underneath the team's point that you can hide under or force others into. Not really that impressive overall, but heading towards the dam area has a very hard area of water to avoid taking the lower routes, especially around the team's point. While the coverage is fairly large, it suffers due to the fact that it's mainly in an open area, but the path from the warehouse to the dam is quite closed in, making it easier for you to effectively use your melee there. Saying that however, most of the map still lacks water, and with the way Hydro plays, you may not get the chance to work your magic here. I will say it is fairly good compared to a lot of maps covered so far however. 
I think Moonshine might be one of the best maps available for Pyro Sharks, and unfortunately, it's only around for one month of the year. I think it's genuinely a great spot for all things Pyro Shark, as not only is the area of water large, there's different areas such as the shallow puddles, the large lake resembling Two Forts middle area, and there's small hiding spots on each team's side for when people drop down, with stairs nearby for you to ambush enemies coming up or down, and bridges to air blast people off of. It's also around the area that the objective is based, so there will be plenty of opportunities to pull off a kill or two. Honestly, if it wasn't a limited time map, it would easily be the best map, but it's easily top tier for sure. Oh look, a payload race map that only has water on the third and final stage. Isn't that a doozy? Anyway, the area that the water is located is, uh, alright? It's near the stairs that you can ambush people near, and there are some sewer-like areas on both sides that you can sit around them to ambush anyone that comes down. I don't know, it's not awful, but it's not that good either. One idea is to air blast people down here that are pushing the car, but uh, it's just fine. Another great map in my opinion, Pia has a number of water areas that are perfect for luring enemies into and getting a cheeky Neon Annihilator kill with. There's a body of water near the start on the right side of blue spawn, followed by the water underneath the first point and on the way to the second point. There's even a small cubby hole with ammo and health that you can camp and attack unsuspecting enemies with. Onwards to the third point, there's even more water on the right side heading into the building, and there's even more water inside. If you want to hide away and get people taking the flank or trying to retreat, there's a small passageway in the water towards the fourth point that opens up to even more water. And just for the hell of it, there's a small bit on the flank route to the final point. Pier has so many areas to work with that it's honestly impressive and is honestly my pick for the best pirate shark map that's available all year round. Who would have thought there'd be another payload race map with water available only on the third and final stage? Me, that's who because I did the research. A long stretch of water runs underneath the ramps that both cars are pushed up, making for a fairly easy air blast into melee combo if you feel like it. If you find yourself on the lower part too, you'll need to tread through the water in order to get back to the car, that is unless you have mobility options, but this water is actually fairly decent compared to the other ones we've seen, so I'll give this one a decent rating overall. Powerhouse has one of the better one puddle maps, technically two with a small one on the opposite side, seen as how it's situated slap bang in the middle of the map where the objective is. Sneaking around and pushing enemies into the watery depths can work wonders if you're not spotted and you're also able to hide next to the walls to ambush any unlucky bugger that jumps down to you. The small area on the other side won't see as much use by any means, but can be used if you're coming out of the larger pool side. It's not a bad pyro shark map to be fair and could be far worse. This map doesn't really work as well as you would think, at least on game modes other than capture the flag. The two watery parts are spotted around the edges of the map and you won't really ever find people around here that often unless they're attempting a flank. The variations with the doors closed off make it even more apparent. It's not too bad if you force people in, but you won't find many willing players wanting to dive into the water unless they're dead set on killing the fleeing foe. The best use for the Neon Annihilator however is hands down in the intelligence room on CTF. The water is absolutely impossible to avoid down here and has plenty of walls to hide behind depending on which way the enemy is advancing from. The other two areas do bring this down effectiveness wise however, but it's far from unusable. Now this variant has some more interesting use for the two mediocre spots on its original version. Each team has a hole they can jump down to get around quicker, making for an excellent opportunity for a pyro shark to lay their trap and ambush players coming down or as they make their way out of the passage. Best thing is that it goes to places where the objective will likely be, so more likely than not you'll find some people using these spots and becoming soaked more often, and for that reason it's a better pyro shark map than the OG. Another pitiful puddle. Yes, this one is next to an objective, but it's covered for the most part and makes it difficult to push enemies into. Plus the fact you're wide open allows enemies to avoid you pretty easily. Not unusable by any means, but nowhere near decent either. This map isn't too bad overall. The water leads around to flank enemies coming from the other side and the huts on the side have a drop down to the water too. The only issue I see with this map is that it can be pretty easy to avoid the water and I hardly see anyone use it other than the flank reasons. It's almost impossible to force them into it either unless it's in the previously mentioned huts due to the walkway large barriers on either side. Not too bad but not very good in the larger pyro shark picture. 
Swift Water is yet another one puddle situation where you can only use the Neon Annihilator in this one particular section. However, I would argue this is one of the better ones, as there is no escape out of here for most classes with no mobility. They're forced to funnel down to the other side to get back to higher ground, where you can easily trap enemies to engage you. And if you're on said higher ground, you can jump down and deal a ton of damage on unsuspecting prey. It's not a mind-blowing spot, but better than you may think. Give it a try. Yet another area of one splatter of water, Stage 2 offers this small ravine under where the cart is headed, along with a flank route to the side. On defense, you can use the rock to the side to hide behind and ambush anyone coming past, and the only way for enemies to make it to you is through either the narrow paths of the cart track or through the water, making it likely you can take a few quick swings with your melee if you're lucky enough. On offense, it's nowhere near as easy, as enemies would have to be pushed right up to your spawn to use it somewhat well. Overall, it's just another decent one puddle situation. This map has one largish puddle on each side, with a shallower puddle under the health kit in the middle of the map. While you can argue you could hide in the area of the health, the bigger bodies of water are in the open quite a bit unless hiding behind the rock, the small bits of wall, or the tree. And in a quick paced mode like pastime, melee doesn't tend to be the best choice, so I can't say Pyro Shark is that effective overall here. There are three main areas in Watergate that you can utilise, the first being outside where players will be waiting for the beam to put bottles in the UFO. The area of water you can use is quite small due to the staircases on both sides and the big boat in the middle taking up a lot of space. This makes the effective range of water quite small which makes hiding near walls your best option here and waiting for players to fall from the sky. The second area near the sewers are good for waiting for players to come towards you, as well as potentially baiting people to follow you through to bash them to death. The final area has a ramp up to the middle and two bits to fall down to the water from. Waiting here is the best choice yet again as forcing enemies down is likely to be quite bad. These areas aren't the best individually but put together it gives a little variety and makes it alright for being a sneaky pyro shark. Our final map is similar to 3 as these long parts of water are available on both sides for players to jump into and wait for unaware enemies to jump in, or force them in yourself. Each side also has a pipe you can jump into that brings you to that same water area, bringing an element of surprise for you to use against those coming from the back route. In the control point mode, there's an additional route straight ahead to the inside of the building. This can be both an ambush spot, but also a route to get behind enemies trying to push forward. This route isn't available on other variants, which cuts out its various attack routes. Even with that, I'm going to say that well is fairly decent for pyro sharks. Here's the final tier list. I edited it slightly, but I think this is a fairly reasonable ranking for them all. This is all my own thoughts, so maybe you had a better time on some of these maps than I have and considered them better or worse for Pyro Shark. Let me know your thoughts below. So, in conclusion, Pyro Shark sucks. This isn't like a haha gotcha moment either. There are so many maps with water that Pyro Sharks can't take a whole lot of advantage on that I wouldn't even bother running it on most maps shown even here. Maybe halfway past C and above would be the only ones worth using it on, and that's being generous. Well, that was a letdown. Maybe that summer update could bring us a combo with a gas passer, allowing us to use them together and finally giving both weapons some sort of usability. Nah, this is Valve. They'll just plaster a wall paint with sunglasses in the update and call it a day. So, until that disappointing inevitability, this has been your water enthusiast Binocli, signing out. See you guys in the next one.